They do not need you. The jam session is a way to basically, in a nutshell, show what kind of musician you are. You could show how great you are, or you could show your ass in a second like that. Friendships to this day that were made instantly at a jam. I think there's gigs I've lost to this day of guys that won't talk to me because of the way I acted at a jam. You know, hey, yeah, we just got back from playing the Normal Dome. Remember, you know, when Duke Fame played the Normal Dome, Final Tap guys were there. And they realized, why didn't I play the Normal Dome? Well, probably because you showed your, your ass at a jam sometime and you didn't get invited to the Enormo Dome gig. It happens to all of us. I, I, I know to this day I'm paying for things that from the past. So always let, let everyone else kind of build the jam around you. Don't always go in there immediately being a leader because you could just lead yourself right out of a bunch of gigs. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. This is Jason Ritchie, and this is my YouTube channel. We talk about all things harmonica, lessons, products, gear, everything. Subscribe today. Here we are for episode three of Talking Blues. By request via my Patreon patrons, we have a special subject today, which is jam etiquette. When you go to the open mic, how do you behave? How do you act? What hand signals do you use? How do you call a song? How do you end a song? What gear do you bring? What gear don't you bring? What do you do and what don't you do? Today, I wanted to bring in a super special guest, Mr. Evil Andy Curse. Here we go. It's not a harmonica player. Okay, somebody that has to actually deal. That's right. <laughs> so here we have my old bandmate, Mr. Evil Andy Curse, yeah, right. Evil Andy Curse. Now, you, if you search my YouTube channel and you search Evil Andy Curse, Jason Ritchie, you can find lots of examples of Andy playing with me and Andy in hotel rooms and different. Right. Four, five, there's a whole city that has food named after it i've defeated everyone in that town i just have just Talk so you just so you know <laughs> buffalo I defeated you. Buffalo, right? You lost. You lost. You lost. To this guy. To this to guy. that guy. Yeah. Winning the crown and then keeping the crown. All right, last year, this cat won. From the Jason Ritchie Bad Kai Band. This is what? This is Evil Andy. Wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. experience guys so when you go to the jam really the way that you play is probably secondary to how you behave true and and, and even as i'm probably being like pompous and up front here uh, as as being not the guy to act you should not act like me right now on stage but i'm only acting like this because you've all acted like i'm acting now and you're act anyway so what happens is like Put it, put it in like terms of, let's say, football. You know, football, we just, just ended up, wasn't a good season. But anyway, football. You need to, you want to have, basically run like the Bills used to run, the no huddle offense at the jam. You don't want everybody around and you're trying to be like, look, man, I just worked out some, you know, song off Dark Side of the Moon and, and we're going to start here. And, you know, it's like, you got to call an audible when you go to the jam and, and try to find something that's like, you know, probably a 12 bar, but not like the most common, like if it's got a cool turnaround, it's got a, something you can say, hey, it's a you know, key of G, we got a one, six, two, five turnaround at the end. Okay, here's the problem right here. Okay. I'd say a large portion of my audience doesn't, couldn't even tell you where the one chord, how many times oh. the one chord happens on a 12 bar and where. Okay. So now I have lessons, guys, on this subject, okay? So what you're saying, 
what I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of these guys can't even get up there and say, shuffle an E from the five, mid-tempo, right. regular straight 12-bar blues. One, two, three. Yeah. They can't do that. Well. That you, I'm sure you've encountered. I, I, yeah, I have. So, like, like to communicate to other guys on the stage, but but there's definitely like, like a thing of like like communicating and go through the the progression a couple times, till you start shedding on the progression and thereby losing people by the wayside. Because essentially, you've just become a speedboat that's gunned up, and all your passengers are dumping off the back. So if they don't know where like a 12 bar is, but they know what like key of harmonica to pick right. up, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but they just can't be in control of the show. Correct. So therefore, they shouldn't probably complain about what song somebody else is calling. Oh no, they have if, no grounds, if, no foot to stand on. Right, right. So if you can't, there's nothing wrong with not knowing how to call something. There's nothing wrong with not knowing anything. Well, well right. I have a thing I'm going to get to on this. Oh, okay, good. Worked on this. But but one of the complaints I hear is, well, they don't play any of the music that I want to play. And then you, you, when you, when you pry a little further into that, yeah. you say, "Well, can you sing?" And they say, "Well, no, yeah, no, I can't." Well, and then you say, "Well, do you, do you know how to call the song?" Mm -hmm. No, well, no, right. So, like, one of the things that people can do is, is, is they can just go, "Hey, listen, I play a little bit of harmonica, right?" And and I'm okay, right? But but like, I really don't know. I can't drive the boat. There you go. That's what I would say. Admit that you can't drive the boat up front and no one's gonna have any problem with you. You say, hey, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eat the food, but I'm not gonna be one of the chefs. You know how they say, what's it, too many chefs? Yeah, too, right. Too many chiefs. Sometimes you just have to say like, yeah. I'm not one of the, I'm not one of the chief right. chefs. Okay, so say you can't call the tune, you know, but you know how to pick up your right key harmonica. One of the things that I think is really, really important, right, uh -huh. is if they keep their eyes open, yes. first of all, and ears, but like, watch like where they're standing, that they don't bump into anybody, right. and that like musically that they don't bump into anybody either. If somebody's singing, probably, especially if you don't know what the root note of the chord is. Try not to play much. Try not to play. <laughs> Right, at all. So, at like, all. Yeah. one of the big mistakes I hear harmonica guys doing is they get up there and they just start blowing from the very first beat of the song until usually after everybody has stopped a couple of times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on and on, like a donkey, just in and out, in and out, it's just like... <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, yeah. The whole like thing. Hyperventilate after the Right. And, and the singer can't sing, the guitar player can't solo. The her when they give the harmonica player a solo, it doesn't sound any different than what they were doing the whole time right. anyway. Yeah, all of a sudden it just sounds like everybody kind of dropped off and now he's just playing the part he was kind of stumbling through. Right, and they're right. not playing over him, yet he's playing over everybody right. else, or she, or they, or whatever they, the thing whatever. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You stay out of the way, you stay respectful. Now, let's, let's address a couple of like, really simple etiquette things before we get into the music thing. Uh -huh. Some more etiquette. So we talked about not playing over people's vocals, not playing over saxophone, piano, guitar, bass, drum solos. True. Don't play over anybody else's solos. Keep your eyes open. So there's another good one, right? Uh -huh. So when you're soloing, like whether, no matter what instrument you're on, it's a good idea like every 12 bars to kind of look at whoever is the band leader right. to see if you should be continuing or not. And if he says, go ahead, that means take another pass. Right. And we all know this guy. There's guys that like, and, and I've done this as, as even like an experiment. You've probably done it. There's, there's guys that will put their head down and like, you, you'll sit there with the other guy and you'll go up to the drummer, the other guy on stage be like, how long do you think, how many times do you think he'll take it around until he finally like looks up and says like, yo, are, you know, some some guys you just have to start singing the next verse or just announce like, hey, on you know, guitar was this guy, and now we go moving to that guy. Right. And and, and to snap them out of their, you know, I mean, I, I would think in a 12-bar situation, etiquette is two times through the progression. One one time is too short. Two times is perfect. And if you're doing good in the band leaders, you know, a three. And and I mean, yeah. if you can't say it in 36 bars, you know, yeah. I mean that. I mean, most guys can. Right. And most guys, and most guys, after twelve, after two times through a tw twelve bar progression, there's not too much. I mean, they got, you know what I'm saying. They're they're starting to run out of, of stuff to say, so it's time to 
hand it to the next player. Yeah, I think that's really kind good. Of, kind of I think that's like really good. Like I love that like two bar. Is two times for the progression. One, is one is too short. Two is two is right. That's just about right. You know? Three is if you're really wailing and you have permission. Yeah. And any more than that, same thing. Yeah, same right? thing. I mean, if you go and people are cheering you on, go. I mean, it, yeah. there's no um, there's no finite amount. But, yeah. but you know, you can tell like if all of a sudden you look out and you just see. People are on their phone, and right. more, it's like, it might be time to hand it to somebody. When I go to the jam, if I have a bunch of gigs, I don't go to the jam. Then all of a sudden you had 10 gigs one week, and this week you got three, and what happened? So you go to the jam. Kind of got to go, know, like, if you're going to the jam where they're going to let you be, like, the solo guy, or you got to be the conforming guy, you know? Like, mm -hmm. like sometimes you want to go in and say, hey, here's how well I, be, I can behave. And then there's other times where it's like, hey, maybe I can add something special to your band. Like, when they're talking, like, stop playing. Oh, there's another. Big you know, thing. you know, okay. you get up there, go boom. You got okay. That's a signal check. You 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 blew a note. You hit a note. You know, signal goes to the amp. Hit, 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 hit one note just to yeah. confirm you plugged your cord in all the way. That's a huge one. Done. That's a huge thing. So a lot of times, you know, you get these jams where people go up and they they'll noodle trying to get a tone out of yeah. an amplifier. And it, it almost doesn't matter if they're even successful in getting the best tone in the world that was ever created. Correct. It, the amount of time that they spent five, ten minutes noodling on stage. And that wrecks it all. It wrecks it. And it yep. really draws like negative attention. By the time they are willing to play, most people don't really care. Most people out in the crowd don't even realize that you got... Like, like I mean, tone is one of those things, you know, like... like you know, I mean, we all, I mean, I had to deal with my mother every time I got a new bass. I was, oh, this sounds, they, they all sound the same. I got another distortion pedal. It sounds like the other one. You know that they don't sound the same. It's right. like you got some, but, right. but to the lay person, you know, they're just like, I don't know why he went up there and noodled around all the time. My point is, most people don't realize that extra five minutes you spent. Yeah, but they don't really notice right. that. I and mean, if you're on a gig, it's double important. Like yeah. changeover at a festival or something. Like you said, get a get a get a check. You got to yeah. know the settings. You know, you maybe blow into it a couple of times, or or you, or, you just want to confirm that it works. You don't want to go one, two, three, four and be like, right, I didn't, I didn't even check yeah. one note. Yeah, you okay. know, like what about bringing your own gear to a jam? What do you think about that? Like, I'm not talking about bass. Okay, well, I want to say because now, now I'm going to go on a, a slight tangent. I have a friend that's a, a, a very good friend of mine that's like a bass junkie like I am. Yeah. And we're like, you know, like, oh, I got a new compressor, you know. Oh, yeah. And it's like, and I'll show up and be like, you know, like, do you have like a patch? You know, I, but but if you do it, well, one, first of all, at a new jam, no. Yeah. Do not bring any pedals. Yeah. If you are. Or what about an amp? Like, fuck no. Like one of those giant amps right there. Like, Absolutely yeah. not. Unless. Unless for some reason you're playing like, well, first of all, you should if, if you're like some didgeridoo player and you got some special rig, and you can set it up in 45 <laughs> seconds, okay, then it's okay. Yeah. But otherwise, no. Except that you're gonna be on a four, you know, you're 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 a tube amp guy, and and a lot of times, you know, like like the jam I go to, the guy brings a little Roland Cube as the house the guest yeah, amp, you yeah. know, like you don't get to play on you don't get to play on a Blackface Super or yeah. something like that. Yeah, you get to play on a Roland Cube. How about how about when you have a gig and uh -huh. you're it's your gig you're uh -huh. you're like a sideman or you're the band leader right and a guy shows up who wants to sit in and he brings his own amp and his own pedal board and all of that on your gig what do you think of that it it best be a longtime friend of yours um, otherwise that's an absolute no most of the time like when you're sitting there like I, I'm a guy that loves power you know, I love like Grand Funk Hendrix Blue Cheer. Like all these bands were three guys. Most of the time, I'm not going like, "Hey, you know what? You know what? This song could use like harmonica, or or <laughs> or, or or even worse, auxiliary percussion. You yeah. know, like somebody that just owns a con like if somebody just played congas all over. You know, like 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 you know, yeah. if, like like all the Black Sabbath records. If they, you know, why why not add just a conga player and harmonica player to beef up Black Sabbath? No, it's it's not really your job as a side person to go on to someone else's gig and say, hey, you need me to add to you. Because to tell you what, right. they do not need you. That's good. All right? That's good. They don't need you. They don't need you. Not at all. Right. Not at all. They never, they got to the gig and they were not thinking you were even going to arrive. Right. They thought they had the gig down, they were there, and all of a sudden you're here and, and maybe they're nice. All of a sudden they realize we're, we're too nice, like they let you start setting your shit up. 
they don't want you there and it, it's it's awkward yeah don't bring your own stuff like, like i said if it's and also like, like like i'll say like i will bring out some new pedals yet but i will show up like at when it's winding down at like 12 30 a.m you know yeah. be like well, no, you know, and they already know you. And they know me. So yeah. they let They've me been do on it. the road with you. Yes, these, I've, these, yeah. I've lived in a van with these people. So yeah. they let me do it. But you should never bring your own paddles. I mean, anything more, unless it's something you could set up. Unless it's something like you already have set up before they tell you. Like, you're like, yeah, I set my little overdrive pedal on top of the amp with a little six inch cord pop. I have a battery. You're not screwing around with. Uh, yeah. Adapters. Yeah, right. You know, if right. you if you do bring your one pedal, make sure it has a fresh nine volt battery in it. Do not do not go asking where can I plug my wall warp because I'm conscious of the environment. No, you're not even conscious of the people you went up on stage with. Okay, <laughs> let alone the fucking environment. So bring a battery. Okay, that is what you need to do. <laughs> now that's cool. The jam also. I don't know if we want to edit to the like, cut thing. Is, is you can view it as dope from two different perspectives. This perspective, the first thing, it's the chasing the dragon perspective. There's like right now, I'm actually, there's one jam I'm kind of not going to. I, I was, I, 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 I don't know why I, I, I shouldn't have let it bother me. This drummer just dragged and dragged and got slower and slower. And I kind of got, I kind of showed my ass and I'm kind of like a little embarrassed by it. So I'm kind of not going back. <laughs> and I shouldn't have got so upset. What did you do? I, I didn't really do anything. I just kind of, well, what I did was I kind of yelled at the harmonica. Well, first of all, it was a harmonica player. I go, what's going on? This guy's constantly slowing down. He's slowing down. He's slowing down. And then the harmonica player told the drummer that I was all upset. And it was like kind of one of those things where I made the mistake of confiding in someone I didn't really know yeah. that went and told the guy that I was so it. it yeah, that's a mistake. But, that, but, but now what I'm saying with that is the jam as Chasing the Dragon Sometimes right. you go to the jam and it's like, it's great. And you, you know, you, people think, man, you took a great solo, great, great, man, that's, I haven't heard that song. No one did it that way. Good song selection. Oh, excellent. You know, and you might go back the next week and you're expecting that same hot and you don't get it. You know, mm -hmm. like sometimes, so sometimes mm -hmm. you do have to back off because sometimes it's kind of like doing too much of some kind of dr drug that you just, you're chasing the dragon. Yeah. Now the other way I'm gonna say it, the way it really is, now what you have to look at it, what I was talking about, in fact, I was gonna say earlier. When you're on stage, you have to look at that stage as a bag of dope. And what it is is, now look, what I mean is, and you know, like, like when you're buying dope, there's like, there's dope in the bag, and then there's like baking soda, baby laxative, there's cut, okay? So the whole stage is your proverbial, like, like you know this, in your hometown, there's a couple of good bands. And then those couple of good bands, the good, like the, the head guy from one band gets together with the head guy from that guy, and they form the super group. That is like the purest bag of that. That is the China white, the best dope they ever made. So now you get up there. Now you get up there, say like they have like, well, you know, the drummer couldn't make it. So they got some other drummer. Yeah. That guy's not as good. He yeah. That guy's kind of like, that's, I mean, he's the cut. Yeah, yeah. The other guys are the dope. He's the cut. Yeah. Now, when you're up there, you might say like, hey, you know, like, I might be the dope and that's the baby laxative. That guy's the bacon soda, you know? Yeah. Sometimes, so what you got to realize, you might be the cut. You may be the baking <laughs> soda. You may be the baby laxative. Maybe it's time the other guys, you know, you got to stand back and realize, yeah. you're not really the dope. Yeah. You're just the cut. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong there's with nothing that wrong as long as you know that. And you be, should know and, that. And then you can get to be the dope eventually. Correct. Right, right. That, that's what you have to do. But yeah. it is definitely well, like that. Well, D, when, when they don't have any cut. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, too much dope can be And disastrous. we've seen that. We've seen four or five great musicians on stage that don't know how to work with and each other like because they all want to be the dope. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah, you Another thing yeah. that's very important yeah. is is this thing. Now, now, this is a little thing that will take time during your audible during the no huddle offense but if you can because the worst thing you can do is to get is to change a tempo or something or change you know, stop something change a tempo so sing the thing you don't know, get a little you know whatever you're saying you know like sing the song you know like yeah. long way from home whatever sing like one bar to yourself and get your foot going it's and great. you know right. where it's gonna be. Right, instead of just one, two, because you'll, you'll be wrong. Most people, yeah, they get up there and they just go like one, two, three, and then 
And then a lot of times, I mean, you've been in band. I mean, how many times you've been in a band and you've been like this? One, two, three, four. And then, and then the drums just come smoking in and you're like, Dude, I didn't count it. I, I know I didn't count it like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. And, and, and sometimes you got to even try to stand your ground against that drummer guy. This brings up an interesting question. So when things don't go the way that you want them to, uh-huh. and it's not your fault, like you did count it yeah. right, you did say A flat, and yeah. they heard something else. You said D, they heard C. Right, right. Yeah, or somebody heard C, right? <clears throat> How do you behave? That's where I screwed up the other day. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not always the guy to ask, but I knew I screwed up. You, you really got to say, you, bro. You, know, I love you really got to, you know, because sometimes like, I'll go in there with like high hopes of, you know, like, and then it's like, shit, you know, like I'm, I want to, and, and like, I can't, it, you know, something's happened, like I can't execute this at this tempo or it's, it's playing so slow that I'm like, I feel like, like sometimes I, you feel like you're trying to run with a cinder block tied to your belt. You're like. And ideally, ideally you should ideally. laugh it off and turn it into whatever song. You know, you tried to make a, a a shuffle and it came out a little more like a ballad. Well, roll with it like a ballad. I mean, yep. maybe if you can, if, if you can, if you can. But I mean, you try not to end the song in the middle of the song or like draw attention to the fact that right. you all screwed up. Maybe you're not going to give everybody a solo to go on. Give like one or two guys a solo. Or right, sing a verse right. To shorten it, and to so get out of it. Doesn't yeah. really know know that you're ending the song uh, because it's not going to the, the way you wanted it to There's a go. big one. Ending. Ending song. So, um, particularly vocalists, okay, but also harmonica players, uh-huh. people that are green at driving the boat, at, yes. at, at running a jam, can, they can sometimes get into a number, but they can't end it. Correct. So, what I usually tell people is to go ahead and go to somebody in the band that can end the song and say something like, hey, can you can you take us out? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm done. I got Right, like, right. The last verse, whatever, write it out. You could say before the song, hey, can you take the last solo and take us out and end it for right. me? Even if you said, I don't know how to end yeah. the song. You can always count one, two, three, four, and then put your hand up, bound. There's another one. Hand seals. Yeah, hand seals. The snap, I mean, like, like also, like, like that whole, like, I, I the clothes, that's the... That's everybody on stage just stop. Like there's no, you know, when this, this is done. Right. And a lot of times, like if you could find like a riff, you know, like to end, you know, and just, and you can slam the hand on the Right, and, and, right, you know, yeah. Just a lick, yeah. You, you, you know, as a harmonica beat. player, just cut the harp show, like I'm not playing, and you almost right. like, I'm not playing anymore. Like put your hand over the harp, right. just show everybody, I'm done. Right, you know? and if you have one of those licks like um, yeah. that'll help. Yeah, uh, that or shave and a haircut, and two, two bits. bits you know, yeah. or, or one thing that always works good is, is is people can always read this is the cha cha cha. Yeah, cha cha cha. People can read lips because because that's one thing. Is like 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 you even said earlier about C and D. Like you got to think of this. You got seven letters out there. Right. You're calling across the stage, and five of them rhyme. Right, C, you know, D, E, yeah. G, only, B. Only G, yeah, yeah is, is F and uh, A are the only two that don't really, you know, like, you're right, not going to mess B up. Right, flat could be E flat. I, I had this happen one time where a guy did this, and I was four like... Four sharps. Yeah, and I, I went to the four chord. I didn't know. I didn't Four know. flats or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we were going... Actually, he did four flats. We, we went to A flat. Right, and I would have gone to four two. That's what yeah. happened. I can't even remember what key we were in, but he was signaling a key change, and I, I went to the four chord. Guys, in a nutshell, the sharps move in fifths and the flats move in fourth. You start at C, you keep adding four, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you, go to, you go to fifth, G, D, E, D. They don't sharps. even have to know the they harmonica know guys. They got, they're got already tuned. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they don't even have to think that, about That's the, one thing yeah. about the harmonica guys, though, is I, I think a lot of them think that because they have, like, like, they think that they have, like, an instrument with training wheels. That because, like, they're... Yeah, they kind of do. They, they kind of do, but they kind of... I mean, there's some... Yeah. You know, there there are still notes even though you're in the right key. Like like I was told yep. one great thing. Right. He goes, Hey man, as as long as you're you know know what key you're in, you're never more than one note away. Yeah. But sometimes you're just always that one note away <laughs> all the time. You know. So so it's like you know like you gotta kind of know. A like, half step away is the is the yeah. right is the term. Yeah. Yeah. You're it, always just a half, a step, half away step away from from some note that harmonizes at least, exactly. which is true. But yeah. what you're saying is also true but that. It, they are often always on that half yeah, step. Yeah, it doesn't totally play itself. And if you can find like a, 
like the like maybe the top like the ending lick or the turnaround lick and lock on at least like so you know like every time that comes around at least you got that part. Well, I'm teaching them roots, thirds, fifths, sixes, right. sevens. I'm teaching them basic blues progressions. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to get. There's a lot of lessons on the channel about all that stuff. So I'm awesome. trying to get them there. Okay. More on this subject of hand signals. Sometimes a good way to end a song would be to, to do this one. Yeah. Effectively, guys, if you go like this, 90% of the bands or more in the country at a jam are going to know that that means to repeat, the repeat bars 9 and 10 through 12 all over again. Something like that. It's usually a, a last or... The last layer. Uh, I usually think of like the. I don't even think of the bars as. I usually it's a, the words you know like like so hush singing. little yeah. baby exactly right don't, don't you cry right. right so hush little baby again yeah don't you cry and then the last one usually retards yes so hush, hush little baby don't you cry also even if you know i mean most of these songs you, you will eventually know where they're going but don't second guess and anticipate the band leader he might have some little special ending he was getting to that you didn't see coming that's right that now by you over embellishing yep. have driven technically kind of steered him right into the wall kind of yep. thing you right know, like, if you like, don't know don't blow right right there you go just sit out and wait they will 90, 99% of the time, a good band leader will, you will 100% know when you're supposed to come oh, in. Oh, yeah. So you might, like you said, second guess it and think, oh, because yeah. I'm nervous or I'm on stage or yeah. I want to do a good job. I don't want to, I don't want to hit the beat late. Right. Right. Like that, you might jump and then in, in, in reality, what you've done is now interrupted a cool impromptu arrangement that right. didn't get to happen. What makes all the cool guys cool is that they don't do everything by the book all the time. In this talk, you talked about a good jam being like, you know, good dub. Yeah. So, and you also mentioned that like, you gotta call songs that people are capable of doing. You don't right. wanna go dark side of the moon, like you right. mentioned, right? right? So if you know what you're doing, you can make a Stormy Monday or a Scratch My Back or a Help Me or whatever these kind of numbers. Very, very fun yeah. and very exciting just by doing something a little different. Now with YouTube out there, there's so many songs you can find that are like cool for good, you know, so you don't have to go up and be like the umpteenth millionth guy that plays Got My Mojo working. What's that, that, that joke? It's better to be keep your mouth closed and be perceived in idiot then open it and remove all doubt it's great that applies big time and every little like silly thing that you know like 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 without quiet there can be no loud so sometimes play quiet because right. playing okay. quiet parts will make your loud parts sound louder you know like, like and and less loud when you're able to go quiet right because people will know that it's going to go back right yeah. right there's a, you want to be able to jump up to your loud moment right otherwise it's like you're just like Okay, you went like from right. this loud to oh, uh, uh, right. like you barely did anything. Right. Let's talk about that too. So I've seen people take that too far. Uh -huh. I've seen people with the break it down thing. Shh, break it down, break it down, yeah. break it down. Trying to push that so far yeah. that like it literally annoyed everybody in the band and the audience is just looking like, why is this guy continuing to go quiet? Yeah. And he's not doing anything amazing enough to warrant the band being that quiet. So right. it can go too far. Absolutely. You can be too loud for too long, or you could be too, ooh, look at me, I'm super quiet yeah. guy too. Right. On the break it down subject, right? One of the things that amazes me is still at this point in my career, even with like some of the top musicians I work with, sometimes when I say break it down, they'll stop. Yeah. They'll stop playing. And when I reality, I mean just break the volume. Break down. down break like it down. on the downbeat, pow. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like they're going bump, ba dump, 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 ba pow. And it should go quiet, but it's still going bump, ba dum. Yeah, so that, that's a breakdown. I that's a breakdown, breakdown. But I've had guys go bump, ba dum, ba dum, ba dum, ba dum, and then stop. No. Well, and then you're playing, and you gotta look back, like, come on. And then they come in at the same volume. That that should be considered out. You know, like like when you you know like like if you're gonna take. Yourself, that's what I do. Out. Out. I yeah. use this one yeah. when I want them to do that. I do that this one. That means nobody play. I don't care what you think. Yeah. You, no, right. No. 
out. What about people that are upset, that get angry that they're not called fast enough on the list? <clears throat> that can be, I mean, that's usually new people. I mean, people who are new to the jam. Like here in New Orleans, you know, you got, all of a sudden you got four horn players up there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't give everybody a soul. You know, if yeah. you give everybody two yeah. bar, two times, you give everybody 24 bars. Yeah. That's 48. That's 96 bars of just horn solos. Yeah. Let alone your solo, let alone the vocals. Because definitely there are people who will get upset at the, the host because they didn't get called up. Fat. Oh, you know, and I've even been in, in, in situations where it's like, I know there's another bass player up there, but the guy said, look, you know, this this guy's coming up and he's a pain in our ass, but you you work good with him. Just stay up here till he's done. And, and you know, mm-hmm. and, and I can feel people out in the audience like, why is he still up there? I've been standing here like, yeah. Here's something I'd like to talk about. When I was coming up, okay, uh-huh. jams were, I mean, prob- they were like, to me, the way they probably are to like a lot of my audience. Uh-huh. It's a big deal. Like you get excited about it, even nervous. Yeah. You go to the jam, you, you have maybe your new equipment that you want to try. Right. You, your song that you're thinking of doing and you're, and you're, you're, you're you got a little bit of nerves. Yeah. You, you try to get there early and sign up on the list to make sure that you get up there. And, you know, a lot of times when I was coming up, I didn't get to go up with the people that I wanted to play with. Yeah, that's usually the situation. And a lot of times people will, will, will cause a problem. They'll be like, well, I want to play with the house band. Yeah. Right, I would like to play with the house band. But the problem is the house band did their set and now it's time for the jam. Right. And they need to get this bass player and that drummer up. And in order to do that, they have to put them all together Correct. to make the evening function. Now, when I was coming up, Andy, it was a lot different, even in Maine, that even not in a in a in a in a big city like Chicago or New York right. or Memphis, but even in Maine, it was a lot different than it is now. There was less emphasis on things being fair. Yeah. Okay, a jam. Now these jams that I went to, yeah. they ran for for decades, right? Right, and, and because they sold beer, yeah. Because the musicians on stage were really good, right? Right, and the, the reason that the musicians on stage were really good was there was immense bias in favoritism, yes. And and and, the, and the, they that didn't mean that new musicians weren't able to get up, but it took a long time. Like you could go to the jam, literally every single Tuesday for three months or six months and not get invited up. Oh yeah, that's a serious one. Right, and that's how I came up. And then like, if you got up and if you didn't play really well. You might not get up again. And they might get you down after one song and then they leave the guy up who comes on after you up for an hour and a half. Right. Right, because he can play. And not only can he play, but he's earned the right to play. He's right. er, he's done his homework. He's he should he should be being paid to be there. He's really helping right. the people by being there for free, True. right? And probably he's thinking in his head, maybe I should get down. This might be hurting my gig by playing for free too much. Like as the guy in the house band, sometimes you're hoping that guy comes up because you know, like like you know, like I, I played bass in the house because because one thing at the jams usually because it's a jam. They don't need to take breaks because it's rotating all the time. Right. So, like, if there's not a bass player, I might be stuck for, like, three hours. Right. With no break. You know? So, like, yeah. sometimes it's great doing the jam because you might play one set and hand it off to someone else. for, And you just go sit outside and talk to your friends for two hours Finally. and come and collect some money at the right. end of the night. Right. And go home. The way that, that I came up. Even though it was sometimes we got our feelings yeah. hurt and things were mean, I think that that's it was one a better of, jam. And it's one of the reasons I'm a better musician today. Yeah, is I was told no a lot, and a lot of times, even though I was kicked off the stage after one song or two songs or something like that, I was also kind of told afterwards why. And instead of getting angry and saying, "Oh well, you know, it, I'm just a different style," yeah, yeah, and they don't understand my style or what, instead right. of doing that, I. I listened and I was like, okay, what what record should I get? And they're like, okay, learn this song and learn it exactly yeah. like the record. Now, that doesn't mean that later, like now, 20, 30 years later, I can't change the song. But back then I had to learn it exactly yeah. the way, and, and I was expected to play it exactly that way. 
And if I didn't, I was going to hear about it. Right. And that's why I think like those jams ran really well and for really long is they sold beer. And also for the audience that wasn't there to play, yeah. it was more fun to sort of see the drama. Yeah. Like, they, oh, they here comes it. a new guy who thinks he's ready. Yep. Is he ready? Is he ready? Right. Right. Or, or, or yeah. she or they or did, whatever. Did they, go, did they go up and show the person or did they get their ass handed to him or did they go right. up and school every... So, you know, sometimes somebody gets up that's like, you know, there's some guy that looks awkward and he goes up and he plays his ass off. And right. Then other times the dude's got like the... Most expensive guitar. He's yeah. got suit. Ta- Tailor made yeah. clothes on. Yeah. Looks like a million bucks. And, and you're like, you just assume, you know, hey, come on up. And you're like, you just, just like yeah. you, for, for people you don't know, remember there was, there used to be a guy named Alan Funt. I know you don't, it's a candy camera reference. Now. Ashton Kusher, you think you're getting punked. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you're like, you cannot believe that. Yo. Yeah. My audience will know Alan Funch. Yeah. Okay. I've seen my demographics. It's okay. like 65 good, good. and up all men. Yeah. Beautiful. Then yeah, know. pretty much. <laughs> I think right now there's a, there's a huge trend. And I mean, I think it's good that we're sensitive to people's feelings and right. all of that. And I think it's good that like we're openly talking about anxiety oh. and depression and all this. But at the same time, I think we've taken it too far, especially when it comes to learning a craft. Yeah. And I think that, like, there needs to be discipline. There does need a little bit. Right. And and, and I think that, that people should expect, if there's a list and you get called on that list and you're maybe not, like, the most highly developed player, that you probably won't be on stage for as long as some of the other people. And I don't think that you should be mad about that. I think that you should use that as a tool to make you go practice more so that you, next time you get on stage, you can really show them. Three or four songs next time. Right, and you can, can, so you get rewarded for the work that you put in. Or when you finally get like, like, to get up there and you go like, can someone else please like, <laughs> you know, I want to get down now. Yeah, you got to realize if going up there's a side man to back someone up or to run the thing. No huddle no offense. offense is the key. You know, like, right. like later on, you can meet people, go to a rehearsal room, huddle all you want, and make a complex song list with segues and songs with key changes and all sorts of, you know, and like. Uh, medley. Medleys. Yeah, yeah, medleys. yeah. yeah. So you yeah. do medleys and stuff like that. Going to jam session is a way to basically, in a nutshell, show what kind of musician you are. You could show how great you are, or you could show your ass in a second like that. I, I, I still think I have friendships to this day that were made instantly at a jam. I think there's gigs I've lost to this day of guys that won't talk to me because of the way I acted at a jam or something. And, you know, like later on as they, somewhere it's like, you know, hey, yeah, we just got back from playing the, the Enormal Dome. Remember, you know, when Duke Fame played the Enormal Dome and the Spinal Tap guys were there. You know. Anyway, you know, and they realized, why didn't I play the Enormal Dome? Well, probably because you showed your, your ass at a jam sometime and you didn't get invited to the Enormal Dome gig. Sure. It happens to all of us. I, I, I know to this day I'm paying for things that from the past. So always. Just, just it, it's it's good to go go there and kind of like let let everyone else kind of build the jam around you and 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 try to add to them as always don't don't always go in there immediately being a leader because you could yeah. just lead yourself right out of a bunch of gigs. It, it definitely can happen. Thank you everybody for tuning in to Jason Ritchie's YouTube channel. 16 years of incredible YouTube harmonica related content. That's right, 16 years. At this point, over 500 free instructional videos. If you're interested in what kind of harmonicas I play, microphones, amplifiers, pedals, any harmonica related products, please check out my sponsors. These sponsors in one way or another also help keep these videos going. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Blue Moon Harmonicas, bringing you the best in custom harmonicas. We got custom cover plates, custom combs. You can get your name put on it, just like me. Reed work, refurbished pre-war marine bands. Look at that, they put the little brace there, no more crushing the covers. The Lone Wolf Blues Company very best in pedals, microphones, almost anything you need for your amplified harmonica need. The Lone Wolf Blues Company, right here out of Ponchatoula, Louisiana. We got you.
Harp gear, amplifiers. They got big ones, they got small ones. You know what they sound like? They sound like the best tube amps on the market. Harp gear amplifiers out of Ocala, Florida. Pedal pad, pedal boards. Incredible custom pedal boards built to last, made by two brothers who really, really care. Honer harmonicas. A moon cat loves the Honer harmonica. I like the Marine Band. I get Tom to put the little special 20 cover plates on it. He tricks them out, but they play great right out of the box. All of these sponsors are linked below in the description box. What else is linked below? Patreon. Consider becoming a Patreon patron. You'll be supporting me. You'll be supporting the cause. You'll be keeping these videos free for everybody. And you'll get a lot of extra content over at Patreon. You'll get vlogs, occasionally some extra lessons, some posts that you might not see on Facebook. A lot of stuff that I can't say or won't say here on YouTube is over on Patreon. I love my Patreon family. You guys are the best. If you're not into the monthly subscription, you can also give me a one-time tip at Venmo or PayPal below too. I'm a touring musician and I play all over the country, really all over the world with all kinds of different acts. Check out my website, www.mooncat.org. In all seriousness, YouTube, Patreon, my sponsors have absolutely changed my life. Subscribe below, set reminders for the videos. Don't miss any events. Every single Friday, there's a free harmonica lesson and a lot more. Even if you're just subscribing, you're helping me a lot. Those of you that are joining me on Patreon, you guys are helping me to make better decisions with my career. In all sincerity, thank you so much, YouTube for just an incredible, incredible outlet. It's a video diary. I get to look back at 16 years of these videos. I had a lot of new friends, some really fine musicians, made some great contacts in the industry, and it's all because of you. Thank you, my harmonica family.